Good morning, everyone. Glad to glad to have um, every one of you, you know, join us here um, this morning. Um, I think today for me, uh, what I want to do is just um, create a basis for discussion, right? Um, and and essentially, I'm going to just drop a few hints that will make all of us, you know, I mean, connected here today, think and say, okay, is this something perhaps we want to give a try to? in our organization, um, yeah. But but let me start by asking a question. Um, and please, we will, we will use the chat a lot because it's, it's part of what we've come to see um, when we talk about the whole concept of performance support, right? How can I provide instant you know, information at a point where people need it? Um, so that instant feedback for me, what you're doing for me is performance support um, and so on. Okay, good. So if you have head of performance support, either you're going to raise your hand or you will say, you know, I mean, uh, you, you say yes on the chat. I mean, I have heard about performance support. Perhaps you implemented it. Perhaps, you you know, I mean, let, let's, let's get active on the chat. So, you know, apply performance support on me. Respond. Let me see. Either you're raising your hand or you're, you're typing. You know, any one of them works because at least with raising of hand, I can see. With typing, I can read. See, in that way, you know, you're supporting me. Sarah says she has heard about it. Okay. Um, okay. Any other comments? All right. Good. Just hearing about performance support. Cynthia, you're welcome. Okay. <clears throat> I mean, it's been around for some while, I mean, and not too popular, um, maybe in our environment, but obviously something that we need to, you know, I mean, give attention to if we're going to be able to improve the performance of people. So we're going to discuss it. I mean, for those who have said yes, or those who perhaps are just new to it, um, we're going to have to discuss it, right? Um, so just think about, you know, performance support as, um, you know, that next level, okay, that you want to move to, to making sure your people can indeed be successful. I, I will share a few slides. Um, but like I said, again, the objective of the slides is just to allow us, um, you know, to create a room for discussion. I always like that the discussion is live. We are able to, um, we are able to, you know, I mean, engage and are able to, you know, talk about the concept ask questions and get, you know, I mean, answers. All right, so just a moment now, let me just share my slides so I can just take you through a few and I have very few slides and then we can then discuss and talk about it as, as, we, as we go. So, I mean, this is my typical opening slide and I've used this same image, okay? Um, in, in, in an earlier session that, you know, I've done for um, OL, OLXD. Um, and the whole goal of any such effort, this discussion we're having, is to deliver high performance, okay? Because if we deliver high performance in the workplace, then our organizations will succeed better. Then our organizations will be able to deliver on their mandate. Then our organizations will be able to achieve the goals that they are set out, set out to, to achieve, okay? Um, so today we're focusing on performance support. But I thought it'd be useful to start with you know, I mean, um, perhaps a short clip. This is the um, outline that will guide our discussion. Um, as you can see, we'll be looking at just a bit of introduction. And then we'll say, is PS practical? Is performance support practical? Uh, what are some things you want to keep in mind as you begin to think about implementing it? And, you know, what can you do on Monday to at least maybe perhaps begin the conversation within your office? All right. Um, Please, if you don't hear audio, just uh, Demola, please just monitor and stop me so I can go back and reshare again. I wasn't sure if the thing picked up the audio. What is the forgetting curve? Roll back to 1885 and Herman Ebbinghaus was in the prime of his life. His beard had blossomed into a fantastic set of bristles and he was busy pioneering an experimental study of memory. His rigorous research method needed only one subject, himself. Herman got to work testing his memory and plotting the results. 
His findings showed just how rapidly information seeps out of our brains. Within a month, Herman had forgotten 90% of everything he'd originally learned. His findings have since been backed up by neuroscientists. Our brains operate a strict use it or lose it policy when it comes to information they store. In a training context, this is hugely counterproductive. If training is going to drive behavior change, then it needs to stick inside your learners' brains. To make information sticky, it needs to be regularly reinforced. Retaining learning is like watering a plant. If you don't repeat the act regularly, you might lose it entirely. But if you look after it, it'll grow strong roots and stick around forever. All right. So, um, so back to that video that we watched. Um, I'd like to just ask a question, you know? I mean, so tell me, um, do you agree with the concept of the forgetting cough? That was all that I was trying to show with this short video, okay? As human beings, our memory has limit, as you're going to see in my, my next slide, right? That our memory has limits, okay? So, I mean, people have tried all kinds of methods, you know, especially in trying to in, in infuse learning into people. Um, but, I mean, to a large extent, it continues to lag behind. Look at this, this, this study that was done, you know, I mean, um, by about, I mean, with 511 manufacturing companies that are contributed to it. In that sector, where you find that, you know, people do practical things, right? People operate machines, people, you know, I mean, I can see um, when people do job shadowing, you find that, you know, people remember it 81% of the time, okay? Um, and then just look at, you know, in-person classroom, 15%, uh, um, class, I mean, online, 3%, and then others. So you can see clearly there is a need for us to have this discussion um, around this subject. Of, of performance support, um, what 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 would help us to move the needle on that performance and ensure that you know we can succeed even better. Well, I mean, first let's let's even define the concept, okay? Um, for some of you who have heard about it, for some of you who are just hearing about it for the first time, um, you know, the whole idea around performance support is any tool, resource, anything. I mean, it could be, um, you know, something that is printed. Um, I mean, for those, I mean, perhaps that's what I remember, there is a little book that was given to, you know, Philips consulting staff back then. It's called the Memory Jogger, okay? I don't know if you you got it. In fact, interestingly, I still have it, but I was hoping that I would bring it and I'll show you as part of this training. It's inside now, so I can't just leave and, and you know, I mean, and, and bring it. That's maybe when the discussion is going on. But you see, that, that book was just a small, crunchy, you know, I mean, um, book. You know, it was um, printed to be small, pocket friendly, so you can just put it in your pocket, okay? And then, you know, when you're, as a consultant, when you are in, in, in the field and you are, um, you know, trying to provide assistance to, to, to your, to your, to your um, you know, I mean, uh, your client, and, and you forget a concept you're trying to describe, or you forget, all you do is just reach out to that pocket, to your pocket, and bring that memory jogger, okay? And the whole idea is it's a memory jogger, right? So it's, it juggles your memory. So it reminds you things that you should know. And then when you just bring, you just flip to the page, hopefully you would have become familiar with it. So you can just go to the page to flip to, and you can, you know, uh, pick information and support your, 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 your client at that point where you're helping the client, okay? You don't need to phone, phone a friend, or, or, or delete two options, as the case may be, right? Yes. So that's why print also is there, okay? Because, you know, I mean, in, we're moving obviously into more technology, more chat, you know, type, you know, I mean, um, solutions. Um, you, you, you obviously would, would have seen all the chat box and, and things like that. We're going to see examples of this. Those are different, different ways of, you know, making performance support happen. So whatever we do that would help people provide guidance and, and assist them at their point of need, okay? And, you know, not in the classroom because in the classroom that we don't learning, right? We're saying when they are in the workplace, okay? Any such resource, any such tool 
Okay, I mean, and again, I'm not going to recommend any particular, I mean, technology tool to you here today. I'm just going to make this discussion open to you. And then you can go search for tools, but I'll give you some guidance, you know, as to what to, I mean, perhaps to keep in mind in, in searching out um, for, for tools that you want to, you know, I mean, bring into the organization. So I hope that helps you. But let's, you know, try and dimension it further, okay? Because, you know, as my overriding statement, you know, shows, um, as, you know, work or job or the job plate, I mean, becomes more complex, workers will need better and faster access to knowledge, okay? So they need direct performance support. So let's try and, you know, separate them now, okay? You know, I mean, um, if you look at there's training, there is knowledge management, and there is performance support, okay? Look at the purpose of training to instruct, okay? I mean, um, when Jackson was choosing a subject I should talk about, the options were between knowledge management and performance support. So knowledge management is another, you know, I mean, um, workplace, you know, um, necessity that organizations need to give attention to that would help and ensure that knowledge is retained within the organization so that people who um, are experts in several, in several fields within the organization do not just walk away with the knowledge that they have in their heads, all right, and, and move to, okay? All right, now we're saying, comparing these three, training, knowledge, and performance support, you can see, you know, what the purpose of each, okay? Um, the purpose for training is to instruct, the purpose of knowledge management is to inform because, you know, I mean, we're saying somebody knows something and, you know, he's sharing, right? So it inform, informs others. Um, but performance support is making it happen, performing, okay? Performing, all right? Uh, look at the workflow. If you are in training, except you are doing learning in the flow of work, Justin mentioned it when, we start, when he started introducing, okay? Even when you're doing so, to be able to concentrate well in that training, you need to postpone that work. Okay, people say we can we can multitask. You know, I mean, I, I always say that. You see, research has proven that you know if you're going to be very productive, then you want to focus on one thing at a time. Um, that will help you to be a lot more productive, right? So, if training is going to be effective, then you know work would have to shift and wait. Okay, um, and then you go to the training and come back. But you know if you trace it down to the line in terms of work you can see that under performance support and support you are doing the work you are at the point of doing the work so any such thing that will help you at that moment is what you know i mean um will add value you know to you um and then value of the learning well for training it is structured um for for knowledge management there could be a blog right it could be a blog that an expert has written um, you know, and so what you will do is go and look for that blog and perhaps, you know, I mean, read it. But for, you know, I mean, performance support, it is it is, it is happening at that moment, incident, you know, incidentally at that moment, okay? And then finally, on that goal, and the goal is, you know, for training is skill and knowledge. Um, and then for knowledge management, you know, finding the right information, sharing. But again, look out for performance support accomplishing work task. So um, if we are able to move to that pillar on the right, then clearly, you know, it will help people to, you know, become a lot more productive, a lot more efficient, a lot more effective, you know, at, at, at the work that they are uh, doing. All right. So um, my second slide, Okay, now begins to structure those moments. And I think I showed this slide when I was talking about, you know, my last, my last paper, but I think it fits even more here. So I'm bringing it back here again. You know, I mean, when, when, when do we, when do we, I mean, um, appreciate why it's important to learn something, okay? Perhaps when something is new, okay? Um, maybe you're learning for the first time, right? Um, okay. So maybe a new software has been, I mean, has been introduced, perhaps a new policy, a new procedure, um, you know, so you have to learn, right? Um, 
Another moment of need is when you would have to expand knowledge. Again, this speaks to you know knowledge, right? You have to, to deepen your existing knowledge. This first two speak to, you know, I mean, uh, training can be used to, to deliver on this first two. But notice the third one, right? When you have to apply something, that's another moment of need. When acting upon what has been learned, see? So this is where performance support begins to kick in. Um, when you are applying something that you have learned, okay? Um, so you can see that this moment of need, performance support can come in and help you. When you're trying to solve, solving things, okay? So as I'm discussing these things, I'm sure in your mind, you're beginning to think, you know, I mean about your organization and say, okay, wow, I see. So what, what will, how will I, you know, present this information? How will I begin to, you know, I mean, um, maybe situate, you know, the role that performance support can, can play in my organization. And then the last one there is another moment of need is when things change, all right? When things change um, and they require that you unlearn and perhaps that perhaps relearn, then, you know, performance support, you know, can kick in. So the last three, these five are what we call the moments of need, the moments of need. But the first two can be addressed by training, but the last three, you know, are where performance support, you know, comes in. So let's now take, go to the question. That was like the background. Is performance support practical? Are we just talking in the air, you know? I mean, and, and, um, and uh, you know, trying to just build castles in the air. I'm going to pause my slide here and engage you and see if we can make this as practical as possible. So from what I've described, do you think performance support is practical? If so, have you benefited from performance support? You know, I mean, what can you point to as an example of performance support? Perhaps in your workplace, perhaps generally, you know, as the case may be. Um, again, let's have a conversation before I would, you know, share the one or two slides that I have on that, whether it is practical. So you can post on the chat, you know, have you experienced performance support in real life? Um, you know, yes. Um, let's go, let's go, let's go. Are you with me? You are here. Let's go. We have, have, have experienced performance support in real life. Based on what we've described it to be, you know, what will make it easier for you to accomplish a task that you have to accomplish. Um, where are my people? Yes, it's practical. Give us an example. And Sarah again. Thank you, Sarah. You know, I mean, um, can you find an example? I have some I'll give you, but I, I just wanted to see if people can begin to relate, you know, can begin to say, okay, wow, uh, this is possibly, you know, I mean, um, the most common peers I have seen is won by the fire extinguishers. Okay. I mean, this person is reading support. I mean, maybe, I mean, providing support using quick. Um, yes, I have. Utilize YouTube. Oh, correct. Thank you. Thank you. And you see YouTube. I mean, you can almost find anything, right? All you need is just type, right? Okay. Um, how to videos. Yes. You know, I mean, um, you know, my daughter, right? Again, I try to make this things practical. My daughter learned how to bake using DIYs. Okay. You know, who would give me the, the beginning of the acronym DIY? DIY. Type on the chat. DIY. So I'm, I'm going to the person who said how to videos. Duh, thank you, Sandra. I appreciate that. Thank you. Good. Good stuff. So you can see, I mean, it, it's practical, right? I mean, it, it, it works. Um, the example that I, that I had on my slide, and I'll just share with you, I'll still show it, um, is that of the GPS. Who uses GPS when they are going to work every morning? I mean, do you know how to drive? You know how to drive, right? You even know the Lagos routes, okay? Yeah. Yes. Is that Amure? Are you on YouTube to say something? Hello? All right. Okay. Who uses GPS when they are going to work? 
or should I simplify it? Simplify it. Google Map. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> All right, thank you. Who uses Google Map when they're going to work? You can raise your hand. Eh? If you if Google Map has saved you, eh? All of us, oh, Cynthia, thank you. You see? So, Cynthia, that is one of the most powerful examples that you can you can give to your people if you're having this within the organization, you know. Uh -huh. You see, um, when you think about it, you know how to drive, right? Okay, yeah. you know, and let me see what's interesting again. I I I use Google Map when I'm going to an unknown location. Thank you. See. So you can find, I mean, even when it is not a known location, uh, Sandra, um, and thanks for your, for sharing, you know, you also use Google Map to avoid traffic, traffic prone locations, right? Or traffic prone routes. Is that also? Okay. Which will help you get to where you're going faster. So even though you know it, okay, you know, you know, you know that road, though, you know some of those roads, but you know, I mean, you need something that will just you know, be that extra, that, you know, um, that needle that you that will move and, and make it easier for you to be able to succeed, succeed better, okay? So, so that is a very practical example of, um, you know, I mean, uh, the concept that we have been talking about. All right, let me get back to my slides and, uh, where am I? Okay. All right. So I'm going back to my slides now. There we go. All right. Good. So, um, you know, and that's the example I, I, I put out put out there. You know, I mean, um, and you can find you can see it is very very useful, very very helpful, right? Um. You know, and most most of most times we don't think about it. We just put it on. How does it work? How does he even know that there's traffic here? Okay, and so on and so forth. You don't even bother. Okay, so that is what you're going to do to your people when you think about implementing performance support. Okay, um, whatever means that you, you you think about using in in implementing implementing it. Um. Now there is one of the most recent examples, okay? Um, let's see if you are following the trends that um, has come up of what you will call performance support. This one is open in the air. And, uh, you know, I mean, uh, depending on how you use it, um, you have to check and, and see, you know, if the information is accurate and, and all of that. But at least it is there to support you. Who knows who has who has what I'm thinking about in mind? You know, it 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 entered the stage maybe just a couple of months ago, and it was like a wave, and people began talking about ah. <laughs> fantastic, fantastic. Yes, you got it, you got it. Chat GPT. You see, aha, uh -huh. you see, that is another performance support. Okay. Yes. Now let me show you something. I mean, let me share, let me see if I can share another screen. Um, just a moment, please, because I, I went and asked chat, chat GPT question this morning. Oh, hey, let me show you what chat GPT showed me. All right. Okay, good. So let me share my screen now back again and show you what I found. Um, Okay, I think that should be it. All right. Can you see the screen? Can you see the screen? Can someone just say yes? No? Yes, I can't see my chat right now. Okay, Sandra, thank you. Great. So I went this morning, and obviously I have chat DPC on my system, right? So I went this morning. And I thought, I said, Chat GPT, tell me what is performance support. <laughs> you see? And look at what Chat GPT produced. Huh? 
So you can see, you know, the question I will ask you is, you know, do you have a chat GPT in your workplace? How are people, you know, still mining, you know, for information in your workplace? You see? So look at some of the examples there that chat GPT, you know, mean gave. And um, we talked about job aids. It called online help systems, knowledge bases, and frequently asked questions, uh, video tutorials, and demonstrations. Um, you know, I mean, performance support software. I mean, there are some software that are, are, are now being used in the form of like a chat GPT to, to allow you to be able to ask questions and get answers almost automatically. Think about it. Let's say you're working in a bank, right? And you, um, you're in front of a customer. And the, the, you're discussing maybe the potential of the customer taking a facility for, with your organization or with your bank, as the case may be. Um, and then, you know, you just found that perhaps a new rate has been, you know, been uh, uploaded in, 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 your, in your platform and so on and so forth. Okay. Um, so you don't have that information. Where can you type that question and get an answer? Perhaps in the chat box, a chat box you know, the uh, bots that your organization has put in place, okay? They are, you know, I know banks have, you know, developed all kinds that will help customers. But now the question is, what about employees internally? What is helping them to be able to, you know, do um, their jobs, their jobs faster? You know, see chat GPT mentions mobile apps, okay? Um, mobile apps, yes. Perhaps there's a mobile app that your organization has and I can ask the question there, okay? I mean, if, you you have not grown the database like the neural you know database that ChatGPT is using. I mean, if you think about it, the only thing ChatGPT is doing is ChatGPT is researching you know global databases, global databases, and then articulating that information. You know, I mean, I, I'm putting it together for you. In fact, the the way it even organizes it is just amazing, right? And that's where you know the power of artificial intelligence and where it is where it is going, as case may be. But notice the last one there that was mentioned by ChatGPT, communities of practice, communities of practice. That's another form of support, performance support that you can also get. So for instance, you're connected to, um, you know, the whole idea of, of community of practice is you, you think about your organization um, and you build a community of experts. So maybe you have experts who are experts in credit, just doing again the example of banking. Maybe in manufacturing, you have experts who know how to use a particular you know, I mean, machine or a particular forklift or a particular, you know, I mean, um, um, cooling system, as the case may be. Okay, so that means all new people who come in can be connected to 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 those experts so that they can ask questions and hopefully get, you know, maybe prompt answers um, from <clears throat> the uh, organization. Okay, now see what ChatGPT concluded there. Say by saying the goal of performance support is to provide learners or workers with the resources they need to overcome challenges and accomplish their goals without requiring extensive training or seeking assistance from others. Because most times, I might send somebody a WhatsApp message, hey, please, what, what, is, a, what is the new rate? And, you know, I was giving the example of somebody in the bank, Abi, in, in, in front of a customer, you know? But why can't chat, sorry, what's, what's it called now? Um, WhatsApp chat. Why can't it be a real you know, I mean, performance support tool, because the person you're sending it to may be busy with something else. You may not see that message at that point in time. You see? So you may not be able to get the help that you, that, that you need at that point in time. So that means you might need something else that might then assist you, you know, um, to be able to accomplish, accomplish that. And as you can see the last sentence there, it would help, you know, you become more self-sufficient, reduce errors, and improve overall job performance and even job satisfaction, because then you, you, will, you will be happier as an individual who is doing work, right? Because you have now been able to, you know, get the, that next level of support that you need to make you um, become, you know, more successful. All right, let me go back to my slides. I think I have a, a short clip that I'd like to show you. Again, just to illustrate as an example. All right. Okay. 
All right, so watch this. I know I've used this video here before, um, but see again how it comes in handy in the form of you know performance support. We can talk about it after the video is done. Once again, please confirm if the audio, if the use of smart glasses has. Can you hear audio? Yeah. Yes, yes, we can. Fantastic. We can hear you. Thank you. Has allowed us to see smart. The use of smart glasses has allowed us to see a 40% improvement in resolution time for tickets that submitted to us for technical support use. So the Porsche technicians in the U.S. have commonly been referred to as the fighter pilots of the industry. We have the best technicians in the world in our dealers. We still have to give them the latest technology because it changes literally overnight. With, this, uh, with these glasses, you can get me pointed in the right direction and get this car repaired. Right, I'm going to go ahead and give you a call on the glasses. Let's get that set up, and uh, I'll see you there. So one of the new technologies that we're releasing at Porsche Cars North America is called Tech Live Look. Through the use of uh, smart glass technology, we're able to see what the technician sees live, regardless of where the technician is. Uh, one of the issues I'm running into uh, is actually locating the, the location of the sensor itself. So looking in GFF, it's kind of the left front right there, and it looks like it's this sensor. Let me highlight it for you. Okay. Right there. You see it on your glasses? So right here. All right. Okay. All right. Let's take it apart and see what it looks like. Right, I'm going to send you a couple pictures real quick okay. of the connector, and we'll take it apart and see if we can see anything wrong with it. John, you can confirm this is pin three here, correct? We're looking for the yellow wire. Crimps over the insulation. All right, so there we go. All right. Um, now tell me, again, you know, I mean, small conversation before we, we continue. Um, how useful was that? I would like to hear maybe one or two comments. Either you can type or perhaps you can. Um, makes life easier. Makes life easier. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, she, I, I did well. I'm not sure which one is the first name. Um, thank you. Um, anyone else? I need one more person. Who is my performance support person? You know, you are my performance support. You are aiding me to make my presentation successful. <laughs> yes, go ahead, Awili. Ah, Awili. Is this the same yeah, Awili? Show that. me your face. Ah, Awili. <laughs> is the same one. Ah. <laughs> good one, sir. All right. Awili, go so, for it. Go for it. Go for it. Yes, all right. Ahead. Thank you. Um, so for me, I think is um, knowledge that comes in handy, like on the sports knowledge. Uh, this helps, especially when you have. Um, new insects uh, coming into your organization. It helps for ease of onboarding. And um, in terms of um, performance management, when you have um, certain staff in your organization or your department who are not keeping up to par in terms of deliverables, if we have such deliverables that can be documented in this um, format, it will be easier for them to implement. So they see and they do. As simple as that. Thank you. Thank you very much. If you've noticed in this in this session this morning, we've used examples, you know, in different environments. So whether you're in manufacturing, whether you are in banking, whether you are in, in consulting or in different in different whatever organization you're 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 uh, you're working, you can see that performance support works. Okay. Um yes, and the use of if you see the next the next graph that I am showing on my on my screen, you can see that you know I mean essentially I'm saying if we use this workplace support, look at what it does. Okay, you know I mean you would have trained people right, but when you then add that support, look at where the point four is. Okay, it moves people to that higher level of competence um, or, or what we call mastery, okay? Um, but without the support, you will find that that knowledge begin to win, that knowledge begin to win. There's a concept we call um, scrap learning, 
Okay, scrap learning. So you can take it down and make note, a note of it. Scrap learning. Scrap learning is learning we take in, okay, but we don't immediately use. So research has shown and proven that after six weeks, after six weeks, the knowledge about that thing that we have gotten and we have not used begin to dissipate from our memory. You understand? So after six weeks, we will need like a refresher to be able to, you know, I mean, do that, do, apply that knowledge effectively. Okay. You know, so clearly we, th there's a business case for us to take this back to our organizations. And that's why, you know, these sessions that Jackson does, they are meant to be practical, right? We're not just coming here to just, you know, maybe just discuss and just, okay, this is topical, right? This is showing you the business case for it. Go back to your organizations and begin the conversation. And like I said, you know, there's no one size fits all. What you need in your own organization will not be the same with somebody else. It might, have, might just even be that you're just going to have a knowledge base that allows people to store information that they gather, you know, and that begins to become your own performance support, you know, I mean, um, solution as the case may be. So you, you can build it internally or you can look to maybe solutions that are available online that you can build. But in the end, you will still need to impute the knowledge about your organization because you, you won't find all that knowledge. See, see chat GPT, right? Chat GPT is helping people. But chat GPT perhaps may not be able to help you specifically with some of the things that you have with your own organization, with your own peculiarities. So you have to build that. You have to build your own chat GPT as an example. Um, but does it work? Yes. There is a business case for it that you can go back and make that case. And, you know, your organizations will connect with you um, and, you know, I mean, uh, support the whole idea of beginning to discuss this concept. So in terms of, you know, I mean, um, making it happen, okay, um, we are not going to throw away training and learning. No, that still finds a place. But if you notice there, we're saying training is an activity. An activity is something that has a date, a time, and perhaps a location. Okay? Yes. So for training to have to take place, you would need to specify, right? Um, you know, now learning is valuable and powerful too, okay? Because it helps to enhance capabilities. Training is just one way to learn. Who remembers what I showed, the, the, the chart I showed, not the chart, where the graph I showed, um, there was one way to learn, which is not training, that was mentioned in that chart. Who can mention it? Let's see now if you have been following this class or this session. Who remembers it? In that chart that I showed, you know, the effectiveness of you know, training. What was, what, what did we call it? You know, to, to the question, to, to my question around training is only one way to learn. Job, job shadowing. Thank you, Sandra. Good. See? Yes, job shadowing. So um, we, we think about, you know, I mean, some of you know about the 70, 20, 10 concept, right? Okay. Um, you know, in, 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 in implementing how, um, you know, people grow to competence within the organization. And you find that, you know, on the job, on the job, you know, I mean, forms of learning, you know, is what really helps you. Now, um, you know, if you move to the level of performance, there we're saying that is where the real value is, okay? And learning is only one enabler of performance. So the order then is to bring to bear, you know, um, the, the need for performance support. So again, if you're going to sell this to your organization, you're not going to say, oh, pack away learning, pack away training, pack away, even if you have maybe a digital learning platform. No, we're saying, how can we use this as foundations that would then, you know, I mean, allow us to begin to focus on what can help employees to succeed um, 
even 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 better because that is where that's where the the the, the, the meat is that's where the real focus is in helping us to be able to you know succeed um succeed better so again like i said you have to think about your own organization and your own context context here matters okay um the the solution you decide to use will depend on your environment will depend on your your context um uh, as the case may be but is it necessary is it the way to go definitely yes all right so again blending it works right okay so we need to shift with the paradigm okay um and as you can see um the paradigm is moving to um you know creating an environment where people know they can reach out to get the support that they need. Um, you see community of practice coming in there, social learning, experts and expertise, okay, coaching and mentoring. So it's a it's a blend of different things that you can, you know, I mean, can, can think about. The question is, do people see these as resources and, you know, assets within the organization that can help them to succeed even better? Somebody might be struggling with a problem, but yet there's a coach, you know, there's a mentor in the organization that could have helped, but the, you know, your HR team has not implemented or has not encouraged mentoring as a way of helping people, you know, even with their mental health challenges and so on and so forth, which in any way, in one way or the other, come back to affect performance, okay? We've talked about knowledge management, okay? Um, we've talked about community practice, um, experts. So these are different things that you can bring to the workplace. So it's not just only technology, okay? different other practices that can help you to to make this make this happen so i'm going to wrap this session up by leaving you with these two um you know quotes and i'm saying here my you know i mean overriding statement is give performance support a try all right you know because in the end the outcome of peers will mean higher efficiency fewer mistakes okay better data quality and above all, remember I talked about job satisfaction, less employees frustration in part of you know, the employee. The employee will feel that they, they have a sense of belonging because you are you know, bringing that small X factor to ensure that they are indeed very successful. And how better to end it um, than to use Albert Einstein's words. I never try to remember something I know I can look up. So if you can find a way to make people to look it up, instead of having to try to remember, remember, we started by saying our memory is limited, okay? So don't make people try to, you know, use the memory, have something that they can go check, okay? Where is your own chat, chat GPT? Where is your own, you know, I mean, um, like the example in Porsche, uh, your own Google, Google glasses or whatever glass you're gonna be using, you know? Where is your own chatbot, uh, chatbot, you know? Where is your own GPS, okay? So think about those small practical examples that we've given in the course of the session today. And I'm sure when you go back, you will find that performance support is something we want to give a try to. Thank you.